it's Casey Wallace and we're back here at our event and we're continuing to have great conversations with other practitioners and light workers and star seed children and all of us here that are doing our best to help you find your superpowers and help raise the consciousness of all of us. Um, we're having a little conversation here with an extraordinary woman. We're going to introduce you to her and let you join in on a little chit chat as we tease you and entice you and inspire you to follow your inspirations and your dreams in your life. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Tell everybody please who you are and what you do. My name is Laura Eisenhower and I, by day, I'm an intuitive astrologist. I'm also an international speaker. And one of the names that I give myself is a global alchemist because that's what I discovered I was sort of doing and what I mostly you know, speak on is this incredible transformation that we're going through on the planet. And uh, yeah, the topics go you know, into DNA and earth grids, multidimensional um, cosmos. And uh, I was also a whistleblower, or I still am. I was recruited to go off planet in 2006. Um, connected to agendas that uh, I've catalyzed as being a great force for transformation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to bring it out as a catalyst and also to utilize it in that way in my own personal life. We love the whistle that you blow. <laughs> <laughs> How did you, have you always had this? Did you, did you kind of awaken to it? When did these intuitive, extraordinary intuitive gifts Come, come forward for you? I, I, I've just maintained them since I was a child. I was very aware of the work that I was tasked with, and it really overwhelmed me right away. I'll bet. Yeah, it was just like this big swirling, just hur hurricane, it felt like, of energy that I was processing and processing. Uh, and, it, and it had all sorts of information that I was trying to come to terms with, and it wouldn't leave me alone. It had a lot to do with going into this sort of, you know, underworld journey that I wasn't really looking at it in the mythological sort of sense, but it's just that dark night of the soul you have to go through to just, you know, drop everything, timelines, programs, things that just don't, you know, really serve one if it has to do with control or just any kind of negation of, you know, connection with the soul essence. And so I just really needed to preserve that for dear life. And just being born in the family I was born in, I just had a lot of questions, like, what am I doing here? Yeah. And, um, and just felt really prepared for this window period. I, I was really just downloading a lot about this particular window period that we're in right now. Right. But I never thought I'd have like a voice to be able to, you know, share about it. So it was very surreal and it still is, even though I've been yeah. a public speaker for about ten years. Right. Yeah. Right. And how did you find the bravery? You know, the there's so many of us that, you know, we hide. You know, we're weird. We don't and innately, human beings want to be accepted. The, the worst type of punishment for human beings is isolation, okay? And so this altered ego need to fit in and be accepted, and that's not working for me, and I don't know. So many people hide. So many people go inward. They, they harm themselves. They detach. They they. they quite frankly, even just take their own, at their own hand, decide to leave because it's so overwhelming. How did you conjure your bravery and first begin to be brave enough to demonstrate some of this with people by talking to them about what you see, by giving them information that you knew about them? How did that, where did that come from, from within you? I don't know. I think that's a really, really great question. I feel like I had nothing to lose. I, I felt like I had already died and I had let the world, I just, it was like, I had detached enough from not making sense to anybody. It's like, I don't have any friends, I have nothing to lose. This is all I know, this is all I've ever done. What was the worst thing that can happen? I'm not gonna, nobody's gonna like me if it's already right. that way. I mean, not like people didn't like me, but they liked the friendly me, but when I delved deeper, when I tried to open up these topics, it was sort of, okay, you know, she's really out there and there she goes again. So it was all kind of a joke to people and it was like, something to laugh at and I carried around a lot of stigmas but deep down I knew just don't give this up it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks um, and then I just felt like a big responsibility because I, I, I just I feel the planetary energy so much and I feel the human potential so much and just this crushing weight of these all the heaviness it's like I just it felt like life or death like if I don't talk I'm gonna die kind of thing like if I don't just open my mouth and and it wasn't even about having an audience I just got on social media I just started sharing um, I just started writing and you know, people just really started to relate 
But that bravery too, because I think social media can be the cruelest oh, yeah. platform. I have so many okay? black people just. Keep... So because we, you know, we're in channeling Julius and bringing forth Julius's energy, um, audiences are usually pretty welcoming because an audience is, is obviously has an idea kind of of your topic. They're coming in with interest, okay, and uh, they're they're just are, can be such abusive people on on the social media. I'm always like, wow, it really took me more bravery of doing I would far braver with Julius in front of an audience than I was ready to get on the social media basically social warfare media okay yes. and and uh, learn how to just like you said I'm putting this out there I know I am here to do that um, I know that this is authentic energy of love I trust that it's touching people with love and if it's not even if it's rubbing people wrong I also know actually rubbing them with love no matter what their perception is they are honored enough to do with it what they will right exactly, yeah and also being able to uh, tap into you and your energy and all of us who are brave enough to be here at this time to do this and know that we innately have this cosmic and quantum support system you know for each other yes are you comfortable with who you are now yeah I mean I think deep down I always have been I mean it's like a double life almost. I mean, I do struggle uh, with just the whole, you know, the inner child is very raw most of the time. But I, I have a lot of a sense of humor about it because, again, it's just like, you know, what do I have to lose? But I feel like the greatest gift is, I remember just saying to Spirit, just I just want the opportunity to love people. I, I want people to not feel so alone because when I felt so alone and I was going through these initiations or these underworld journeys and I didn't have anybody to reach out to, I'm like, if I ever live through this, I, I want to just be there for people. I can't do it for them, but I want them to know they're not alone. I want I just want them to know that uh, it's a really powerful and beautiful thing, no matter how painful and daunting it is. It's not so much about the information as it's about that heart connection like you talk about. And so that's the comfortable part because that's really more important to me than anything. You know, we all have our own way of, uh, you know, perceiving reality. We can share our great ideas. We can share our theories. We can share our, our intuitive downloads. We can connect with, you know, higher... Um, beings and really touch people's lives, but at the end of the day, um, if, if all that fails with a person, the, the thing that makes me feel good is uh, I know that love remains and I can forgive and I do have better boundaries. I know how to block yeah. a person if they're being abusive right? and That's I know right. how to say no now, whereas right. I was very much more just, oh gosh, you know, I took it so personally if somebody didn't right. like me, like, it, you know, like inner child. Like, right, right. Now right. I'm just like, it's okay, Yeah. you know, because I know my heart's in my place and and I'm always learning, and I and I want to self-correct when I need to. I have no problem saying I'm sorry. And uh, I just, you know, I feel just very receptive to staying in touch with my own growth. And, yeah. and I think, you know, people don't feel, I, I, I just, I'm just glad we don't feel so alone. Because yeah. that's what I was used to, and that's why I feel better now. Because right. I come here, right. I mean, I just walked in here, and I get to meet you. No, isn't that nice? Yes. Um, we also, I always love to support too. I, I hope, is it okay if we just chat? I just love uh, chatting with you. Um, it's really important, I think, for people who are viewing this who may just be coming into some of their own magnificence that none of us do the same thing. It's not designed that way. You know, good, though, we yeah. don't want anybody to be thinking. I want to do exactly what that person does. And if I don't do exactly what that person does, I must not have anything yeah. that's valuable. In all the years that we've been doing our work, we have never encountered two of us that do this work the same way. And that's the coolest thing about it, it right? And when I finally uh, learned that, that I, that I, wasn't supposed to channel like anybody else and I wasn't going to try to channel like anybody else and quite frankly I wasn't even going to watch anybody else channel because I didn't want my alter ego to start gobbling me up and saying you're doing it wrong you're doing it wrong it needs to be done this way this is the way it's accepted so I had a I had an aspect of separating myself from practitioners for quite a while so that I could fine-tune my own thing and probably stop judging my own self and probably trying to come to a decision as to whether I really could accept whether I was authentic or not. Then settling into that space and 
opening up the energy field and letting all of you guys in and thinking, this is so awesome. But it's a process, mm -hmm. you know. Did you ever compare yourself to other people? Um, I had a sister, I had two sisters. I was right in the middle. So I, I kind of grew up with that older sister, a year and a half apart to the day. Um, and we're polar opposites to the day. And I, and I think I, I, it's like I really burned out on comparing myself because she was top of everything. Right. And I was just right behind her. And so it right. was hard to even begin to know how to, it's like, do I even want to compete with that? I'm not really competitive. And right. I just want to find my own way. I just want to be me. You know, I don't have to be her. And so I learned those lessons really young, having a sister like her. And I adore her, of course. But I mean, I think it's, it's a good learning curve, you know, just to, I, I like to observe and just see people in their element. I mean, I love everything that you're sharing because, you know, my conclusions have a lot to do with the fact that oneness to me is diversity and harmony. It's like an ecosystem, you know, we see with the, to sustain an ecosystem, every creature has to play its role and they have right. to play that role as true to themselves as they can. They don't have identity crises. Right. So I learned so much from nature. My background is actually also wilderness expedition leadership, which I don't do now. I'm a very different person now. Not that I don't enjoy that stuff, but that was a huge eye opener just to observe and learn from, you know, the energies of nature. Uh, just what it means to be authentic, what it means to just be fire and just be water and just be air. And, um, and, and if it were to try and be anything else, then everything would collapse. Right. And so in this kind of work, you know, there, there's there's a, a certain integrity and, and mutual respect that I think is so important for any community. And not everybody holds that. That's right. why it's really refreshing hearing you. I only bump into that every once in a while. And I think that's the foundational example that we all need to carry um, for unity consciousness to, to really, you know, happen because anything less, I feel, is, is attracting the very agendas people complain about. You right. know, so we got to look at ourselves. It's like we got to win the war within if we're even fighting. Right. You know, it's our own internal struggle that we're really uh, tackling. So, yes, I, I, I feel that very deeply and, and I just, I love it because it's like an exciting part of existence that I get to enjoy because it's something I can't do or, right. or I'm not feeling called to do so it's it's to me I'm like in an amusement park but in the healthiest of ways just like oh my god check this out right right so thanks for spending so much time this time around okay please tell everybody how to find you you can find my website uh w well obviously the w is www.cosmicgaia.org you can find me on facebook at laura eisenhower and uh yeah check out my website join my podcast and Thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. We want to get back and let you get back to your other programming, the other things that you're watching. Uh, we hope you're having the most extraordinary day. We know that we have been. And uh, we'll be back shortly and talk to you soon. Thanks.